This is a really poignant and sorrowful occasion, but this weekend is absolutely beautiful. Tomorrow is Father's Day, and Monday is the longest and brightest day of the year. This weekend, Levney would have celebrated his 20th Yale reunion, and it's amazing and heartwarming that so many of his friends from Yale are with us today. So I'm so happy, and I want to return, since we're nearing the end of the program, to the minister, Andy Fiddler's message of gratitude. Levney was my big brother, and I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Levney for being who he was. I want to thank him for leading me, for being Marat's big brother, for being my mother's firstborn child. I want to thank Levney for being my father's champion and for being an amazing father for his beautiful son. I want to thank Levney for being an original and totally unconventional painter whose numerous works in all of our homes will always keep him close. Thank you for teaching with all your heart, students who will never forget you. Lev. I want to thank you for making your life count, for being an example of someone who wondered and questioned and searched and sought and prayed and looked and listened and treasured. I am so grateful to Levney for showing me the way, the other way, not the expected conventional way, but the other way. Levney had no tolerance for the conventional. He introduced me to Ralph Waldo Emerson in 1990 by giving me the essay, Self-Reliance. Whoso would be a man must be a nonconformist. That was Levney, a true nonconformist. Levney told me two things when I was young. They changed my life. He could be very intense, and I was home from college, I think I was 18, at the Thanksgiving table. I was very fancy and proud of myself. And he looked at me and he said, do not become bourgeois. <laughs> I did not know exactly what bourgeois meant. So, in the way we always did, because we both love words, we looked it up. And he said to me, do not become materialistic and do not become conventional. A few years later, when I was in my early 20s, I was living in New York, and I was trying to decide between applying to graduate school in business or graduate school in English. Levney once again looked me in the eye with his intensity, and he said, don't sell your soul by going to business school. Because of Lev, I became a professor of English, and we truly shared a passion for learning and teaching. So I want to say thank you to Levney for teaching me so much, 
for giving me books. Levney's books changed my life. He gave our family, uh, he introduced our family to the French philosopher Gaston Bachelard, whose book, The Poetics of Space, became the topic of our nightly dinner table conversation for years. That book also became the linchpin for my PhD dissertation. He also introduced us to the architectural historian Witold Ripschinski. He gave us all a copy of his book, Home, so that we could find a vocabulary for my mother's beautiful place. Home is actually now a book that I teach regularly in my seminar for freshmen on the meaning of home. In another book by Ripschinski, The Most Beautiful House in the World, Levney inscribed it to my mother in 1989. Dear Mother, Considering your sensitivity to spaces and surroundings, I hope this book helps in furthering your awareness and understanding of architecture, both of space and of life. Levney understood the architecture of life. Same year, or no, not that year, 20 years later, he gave me the house of life. And he wrote, I'm so excited about your PhD project. He was so relieved that I wasn't going to business school. Levney gave me so much poetry, poetry that I teach to this day. Poetry by Rainier, Maria Rilke, Emily Dickinson, Alice Walker, Anne Sexton, Sylvia Plath, Marge Percy. I think I became a feminist because of him. He was a classicist, and he embraced the canon, but he was also very au courant. He introduced me to incredible contemporary authors like Jhumpa Lahiri, Anne Lamott, Jennifer Gilmore, and Anne Patchett. With every book chosen and given by him, Levney opened my mind and my eyes. He expanded my world. But even more than that, as with everyone he touched, he validated my world. He supported my life. He affirmed my interests. Unlike most anyone else I know, Levney was so attuned to who we each uniquely are. He tapped into our true selves, even when we couldn't, and helped us see who we were really meant to be. These were the greatest gifts he gave me. He spoke the truth without even realizing it. So I want to say thank you with all my heart, Lev, for your beauty, for your art, for all the books and all the cards all the wisdom and all the words. In a note for my birthday in November 1999, Lev wrote, you seem to have made room for so many possible gifts. Let the gifts come. Levney always knew that the real gifts in life were completely immaterial. They were everlasting poetic, and priceless. The next year, in 2000, for my birthday, Levney wrote me a card. May your dreams be full of love and light, and may your days bring all the good in you back to you many times over. Obviously, Levney was a poet. Levney, I want to thank you for being the poet for your authenticity, for your wonder, your delight, and your love. I want to thank you for loving us, for loving all of us, for loving all creatures and taking care of us, 
for taking care of my mom as she had her second hip replacement, for taking care of Izzy too, for tending Paula's garden, for making my daughter laugh hysterically, for tickling your nephew's little toes. And I want to thank you for your precious son. And so, my brother, as you once wrote to me, may the gifts come. May your dreams be full of love and light. And may your days bring all the good in you back to you many times over. Well, you were an amazing big brother. And I love you. And I'll miss you.